What we're going to be talking about today is projectile motion at an angle. In order to illustrate this, we have the following projectile here, which is this angry smiley face, which we're going to be projecting at a speed of 5 meters per second, directed at 30 degrees to the horizontal. We're going to try and answer a couple of questions. The first one is what will the time of flight be? And the second one is the range of the projectile. In other words, how far will this projectile actually go? Is it going to land here? Is it going to land here? Or is it going to land over there? What will the displacement compared to the initial position actually be? Now, the first thing to do is just to visualize the trajectory. So after this projectile is shot off at 5 meters per second directed at 30 degrees to the horizontal, the projectile will increase its height until at one point it reaches a maximum height. Then straight after that the uh, projectile will be decreasing its height and it will land let's say somewhere over there at a certain distance that we're going to aim to find out. Our first step is going to be to resolve the initial velocity into horizontal and vertical components. So let's just do that. 5 meters per second, that's going to have two components over here. So I'm going to call this component Vy, which is directed entirely upwards. And this is, because this is the uh, opposite component, this is going to be 5 sine of 30 degrees. If you're a little bit unsure on how to resolve components, we have a uh, how to resolve vectors video that uh, will hopefully clear any issues you might potentially have. Anyways, 5 sine of 30, well this is just equal to 2.5 meters Per second and we're also going to have a horizontal component which uh, I'm just going to draw here in red which will be let's draw this line a little bit thinner just to make sure that we are consistent so this component will be directed purely horizontally in this direction which in this case is to the right. So this component, we're going to call that Vx, and this will be equal to 5 cosine of 30 degrees. And if we put that into a scientific calculator, 5 cos 30 is going to equal to 4.3 meters per second. The next step is to think about what forces are acting on this projectile as soon as it leaves the ground. Now, we need to make an assumption here, and in most cases, this assumption will be part of the question, unless otherwise stated, and that is that we're dealing with no air resistance. So I'm just going to write it over here. Typically, we're dealing with no air resistance resistance. Although we, we may be at certain points uh, in the future, but in this case we're just going to assume that uh, we are dealing with projectiles in a vacuum. Now what forces are acting at any point throughout the trajectory? Let's say that this projectile leaves and uh, let's say th that it's right over here. Well, there was only going to be one force acting on it and this force will be acting vertically downwards and this is the force due to gravity which is the weight and that acts in the vertical direction so we can write this over here that the only force and this is really important the only force acting is the weight Grind this W, which is equal to mg, and that is acting vertically downwards. Well, if the weight is acting vertically downwards at any point, so at this point of the cycle, the only force acting on it is the weight, and at this point of the cycle, the only point is acting is the weight, and at this over here, we only have the weight acting vertically downwards, etc., etc., then the only component which is going to change from the velocity is the 
y component. I'm just going to remove those vectors just to make this uh, a little bit less messy. But if the weight is acting vertically downwards, only the y component of the velocity can change. And this is really, really important. The x component, the horizontal velocity, remains perfectly constant in the absence of air resistance. Now I've visualized this by sketching the velocity vectors, the y component, vy, and vx. At any point in the trajectory, vx has exactly the same length. So vx is just constant, it's 4.3 meters per second. So at any given point, this projectile is moving at 4.3 meters per second. Over here, at the top of the trajectory, vx is equal to 4.3 meters per second. And over here, vx is equal to 4.3 meters per second. Even as the projectile is about to strike the ground, the um, projectile is still moving at 4.3 three meters per second. Now, what is happening to the y component? Well, in this case, initially, vy is going to be decreasing because as the projectile is moving up, there's a force acting downwards. So you can see how this vy vector is getting smaller. So in this case, vy is, uh, is a little bit smaller. Now, at the maximum height, Vy is equal to zero. And this is really, really important. Over here, Vy is moving in the opposite direction. So the vertical velocity is now downwards and it's increasing in this region over here. In fact, due to conservation of energy, the velocity at which the projectile is going to strike the ground vertically is going to be exactly the same as the velocity by which, at which it left the ground due to conservation of energy. And answer the first question about finding the time of flight. In order to do so, um, what we need to focus on is this first part of the trajectory. We have a projectile which is being fired off like so, and in the vertical direction it's fired off at 2.5 meters per second until it reaches 0 meters per second at the top of the trajectory because gravity, the force due to gravity, the weight, is applying a force in the direction opposite to the motion. So what I'm going to do is write down the suvat quantities because this essentially is a suvat problem. I'm going to make a note that this is in the y direction. y direction. And we can apply the suvat equations because there is acceleration happening in the y direction. Okay, so my uh, distance travel in the y direction, I don't know that. My initial velocity in the y direction, I do know, know that. And this is equal to 2.5 meters per second. So that's 2.5 meters per second. My final velocity in this first part of the trajectory, when because the acceleration is um, constant from here to here, I can use that. This is going to be 0 meters per second. And my acceleration, as we said, is constant throughout this at minus 9.81 meters per second until it changes direction. Not the acceleration, of course, the motion in the y direction changes direction at this point. My time is unknown in this case. So in, uh, what I have is three of those quantities which are known and one of them which is unknown. In this case we're looking for the time of flight so we need to find a suvat equation which fits the bill and if we look hard enough we're going to realize that v is equal to u plus a t fits the bill perfectly. Now my final speed is zero. I'm just going to add a little y subscript 
over here just to distinguish this from the overall velocity. So zero is going to equal my initial velocity, which is 2.5 in the y direction. My acceleration is minus 9.81 and the time is what we're looking for. So what we can do then is just simply rearrange for the time, which is going to uh, equal to minus 2.5 divided by minus 9.81. The two minuses are going to turn into a plus, and if we put that into a scientific calculator, this will give us 0 0.25 seconds. Now, something is really, really important, and this is that this is actually the time of the half flight only. So this is only half of the time of flight. The reason for that is because this is the time from here to here. Due to conservation of energy, we can just multiply this number by 2 in order to get the overall time of flight. So um, what I'm going to do is even I'll just give it a little subscript of a half. Actually, that could be a little bit confusing. So I'm just going to make a little note over here that T is the time for half of the trajectory. So the time of flight, this is really important, the time of flight is equal to 0 0.25 times 2, which is going to give us 0 0.50 seconds. So this is really, really important. Okay, perfect. So hopefully that makes sense. Now let's have a look at finding the range of the projectile. Finding the range of the projectile, in other words, what distance it will cover across this horizontal line now is actually quite easy. The reason for that is because the horizontal velocity remains constant. So if we are dealing with a constant horizontal velocity, in order to find the answer to the second question, which is the range of the projectile, uh, let's call the range just uh, just uh, the distance that is going to travel, so we're going to call that d. The distance is simply the horizontal velocity multiplied by the time of flight. Our horizontal velocity, well, we have that already. This is equal to 4.3 meters per second. And our time of flight, well, we already found this in the first